Thank you for joining us for another part of our high altitude ballooning explanation videos. My name is Gigi Lanchbaum and I'm working here at the Fort Hayes State Makerspace. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the payload for your high altitude balloon. To gather data during the high altitude balloon flight, we often use a Vernier LabQuest. It can be attached to four sensors at once, and you can change them out depending on what you need. Examples include radiation sensor, UV sensor, temperature probe, humidity sensor, magnetic sensor. The LabQuest is simple to use. Here are two ports to connect instruments, connections for audio, and your SD card slot. On the end, three more connections for instruments and a USB connector. And on the other side, you have your connection for your charger and the stylus. It has a touch screen and we have made a cover to cover the touch screen during flights so it does not get bumped. Simply push the power button on the side and it will boot up to its main menu. The screen is a touch screen. Instruments attach easily. The ends just snap right into the connectors. There, securely snaps and it will pop up on the screen immediately showing you that it's connected. Connect another one and it just moves the display down to make more room for it. The screen displays the real-time readings from the sensors. To use this with our ballooning, we will want to set it up so that it automatically samples with the sensors at a certain rate for a certain amount of time. To change these settings, click in the white box in the upper right corner that says Mode Rate Duration. The mode you want is time-based, and the rate, interval, and duration are set by you depending on what you want. A common setting would be 20 samples per minute for 120 minutes. That would be enough to cover a normal balloon flight. Click OK after you have the settings you want entered. Then in the lower left corner, hit the play button and it will start to record. Can look at the table display to see that it is recording or the graph display. It will keep sampling now until the time interval you set ran out or until you hit the stop button and manually stop it. After your data collection is done you need to save the data. Go to file, save, and then give your file a name. Make sure the name is descriptive so that you know which file you're looking for. After you've named it, hit Done, and it will save the file, either onto the internal card or the removable SD card. Saving it onto the removable SD card is the easiest way to transfer data from the LabQuest to your computer. Now for a few more tips regarding the LabQuest. The most common error that we see when the LabQuest is used is a problem with units. You can choose between milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and hours. You need to double check that you have actually set the LabQuest to the unit of time that you want it to be. We have had many people who have accidentally launched a LabQuest that only ran for 120 seconds instead of 120 minutes. So they obtained no usable data. A second problem to beware of. Make sure that after you have set your time interval that you start it. Click the little play button in the lower left corner to start your sampling. I recommend that you go to the graph or chart display after that and double check 
that data is being collected. The LabQuest is a delicate instrument. It needs to be mounted securely in your payload box so it will not rattle around and so nothing will touch the touch screen on it. Our solution to this problem was to 3D print a cover to protect the screen and a mounting bracket that allows the LabQuest to be securely zip-tied to the walls of the payload box. Similarly, the instruments connected to the LabQuest also need to be securely attached. I hope these tips have helped you with your payload preparation. Please join me for the rest of the videos in this series explaining the High Altitude Ballooning Program. From the Fort Hayes State Makerspace, thank you.